So get this, I actually already recorded this video a couple days ago, but I'm just now getting around to editing it because I've been at work, been busy, you know. But I learned a lot during this time. A lot of time to figure out why my audio was so bad in my last video. And it's because of a very complicated reason. I didn't have my microphone on. Yeah, so hopefully the audio in this one is a little bit better. And, well, I've had a lot of time to process the movie. Um, I'm sorry, Spider-Man No Way Home. I've had a lot of time to process that movie. I'm gonna take these off. It's kind of a good thing that I'm redoing this video because my last video, like this was, I, I filmed that video right after I watched the movie and that whole thing would have been like three hours long, so. Yeah, and you know, with now I've had a lot more time to process the movie, my nostalgia has gone down, and it's just like, all right, cool, let's just talk about the movie, you know? So to help organize my thoughts and make sure I stay on topic and all that, I put everything into my phone, at least a, a bunch of notes, um, so I can focus on individual beats and so the, the video isn't as long, basically. Overall, no spoilers, um, first, like, at first I was gonna do a no spoilers video. If I did that, it'd only be like 30 seconds long. Because I'm not a movie reviewer, um, to be honest. Um, I would just say, with no spoilers, this movie, in my humble opinion, was absolute garbage. I'm just kidding, the movie was, was really good. If I had to give it a rating, it'd be nine out of 10. Go watch the movie, anyway. I'm not a movie reviewer, so I'm just gonna go from a storyteller perspective. Let's start with the plot. Basically, everything you need to know about the plot is already in the trailers. Okay, so the only thing I didn't see in the trailers that was, it was in the movie was the whole MIT. Yeah, it was cool because essentially, Peter Parker, Mar um, not Mary Jane, I mean, <clears throat> MJ and Ned, they all wanted to get into MIT, but with this whole stuff surrounding Spider-Man controversy and all that. They they had the grades, but then they just, they were just like, well, no, we, we can't accept you because you're associated with Spider-Man. Because of that, that's really why Peter Parker actually went to Doctor Strange. Yeah, oh, um, I also, I just wanna say this, all right? For the most part, when it came to my theories, they were mainly wrong. <laughs> um, Like, I mean, some of the plot stuff I got right, but like character motivations and whatnot, no. In you, um, so they do the whole thing, Doctor Strange, Peter Parker messes up the spell and all that. All of that stuff was good and well. But all right, let's just, let's get into the, like the characters and then we'll probably just swing back to the plot. Okay, so first of all, Peter Parker, Tom Holland, Spider-Man. He was great, I mean, he brought it as always, except, I mean, this time, I, I mean, the, the movie was, darker than the previous um, Spider-Man movies. And I'm actually happy about that because it allowed Tom Holland to just, he was able to show a lot of emotional range. You know, like it, it got to show off his acting chops. I loved it, he brought it, and it was amazing. Now when it comes to the character, at first when I saw this movie, I was just thinking like, oh, because like the way it opens up, while well, it's like, oh, so, Secret identity revealed and all that stuff, but he was taking it pretty well. And I was like, oh, okay, you are really calm. <laughs> I mean, he's, I mean, it wasn't like he was just like not freaking out or anything, but it was more like I was expecting him to be like, oh, okay, so people are in danger. I should, you know, go home and stuff like that and just figure out what's going on. But what stopped me was because as soon as he got home to talk to Aunt May, Happy was there. And by the way, Happy at first to me was being a little bit of a creep because Aunt May clearly didn't want their relationship to go any further, but he was just barging his way into their house and stuff like that. It was like, dude, if you don't chill, are you the other member of the Sinister Six? But anyway, so Peter was like, well, I just want to talk about your ass relationship. And I was just like, why? Yo, let's focus on the big thing right now. Your identity was revealed. But then again, I don't think this Spider-Man up until this point took his secret identity as seriously as like previous versions of the character because I'm pretty sure, if, I mean, in Far From Home and whatnot, 
and even in Homecoming, like every villain knew who he was. Like Vulture knew, Mysterio knew. Um, I'm pretty sure the Shocker knew, although he probably didn't know him by name, but he knew that he was, you know, Spider-Man stuff. He was a high schooler, so yeah, it was pretty much like everyone knew his identity, but it wasn't just like a big thing. Spider-Man was great. He had his moments. What made Spider-Man great for like this version, Tom Holland's Spider-Man great, was just his interaction with the other characters. Let's talk about Aunt May. Okay, so Aunt May in this movie was way better. It put more to her character besides well, I'm the hot Aunt May, so yeah. And they just they just gave her more character and a lot more agency in this movie. When she died, I was like, oh wow, this character really had an impact on me, and I loved it. Um, but then like the moment when she died, all right, because the way she died was just you know Green Goblin's lighter hitting her from behind and stuff like that, and. I'm, I think she got impaled, I didn't, but the way it showed it was just, she's right here, the glider comes in, and boom, and then just hits her. When I saw this moment, my mind had a moment where it split into two. <laughs> where there was the fan, and then there was the writer side of me, <laughs> or storyteller side of me. The fan was like, Oh my gosh, don't die, Aunt May, please don't die. But then the storyteller part of me was just like, Yes, this is what needs to happen for his character to grow. Kill them. From a storyteller perspective, yeah, it makes sense. And this is something I talked about in um, in my last video with my predictions that Aunt May was going to die. And yeah, she died. It did exactly what I was expecting it to do for the character. And it kind of sucks because, like, a lot, so much of this movie was leap. Oh, Daredevil's in the movie. Bam, Aunt May dies. Boom, Tobey Maguire. And I kind of agree with Jeremy John. You don't understand how much better the movie would have been if it wasn't spoiled. Part of me was just like, okay, when uh, when is Toby and Andrew gonna get you? And I'm, I'm not saying that was what I was thinking the entire time, but in the back of my mind, it was like, all right, all right, all right. So when are these characters gonna show up? All right, let's get to it, you know what I mean? And when they did show up, yes, I still had my moment of, oh my gosh, I'm here! I w it wasn't as big as it would have been if I had like no idea that they were gonna be in the movie. But it was like, there, there. You go. It wasn't like that. It didn't ruin the movie for me, but it definitely brought down my hype. So anyway, so with Aunt May, she had her moment where she actually told Spider-Man, Peter Parker, I mean, told Tom Holland, <laughs> with great power comes great responsibility. And I was like, wow. I'm glad somebody told this kid. I was just thinking like, okay, so I guess Uncle Ben had zero impact on this kid. But I mean, I don't think that's true. If I had to speculate, I think, in the MCU, um, this Peter Parker, like Uncle Ben was the reason he became Spider-Man, but he didn't really learn the lesson of a great power comes great responsibility until Aunt May died. So that's what I'm thinking. There was one thing about Aunt May, um, her death, that just kind of was like, Wait, what? I'm not even the only one who felt that way. Um, <laughs> there was a couple next to me and when this happened, they were like, wait, whoa, how is she not dead? Uh, it's basically because when she gets hit by the glider, she just kind of gets right back up. And this is, this is coming from me, you know, I'm, I'm, I assume I'm taller than, uh, Aunt May, and I'm a bigger guy, so if the glider hit me at the rate, the speed that it was going, I would, I would more likely be dead, and if I wasn't dead, I'd be paralyzed to the point where I just couldn't get up and I'd be freaking out. So <laughs> she was just, I mean, props to Aunt May. <laughs> it, it gave me a lot of respect for her character because I was just like, oh, <laughs> shoot. <laughs> you took that better than I could. <laughs> Cause she just got up and it was like, <sighs> man. Uh, yeah, I'm fine. Just got knocked on my ass, that's all. How are you, Peter? Dang, I see why they did it because it kind of drew her death out. And her death scene was really sad. And almost Peter was just right there and he was trying to comfort her and he had blood in his hands and he was trying not to show it to her. She just slowly died. And then to make matters worse, Happy, or should I call him Puppy Dog Happy, he saw Aunt May dead and he was like, oh my gosh, no. And then Peter, he was like in shock. And then the police showed up and then they shot him. And see that moment right there, I was just like, wow, yeah, that sucks, dude. Can't imagine if I was in that situation. But yeah, Aunt May, great character. I feel like she added so much to the movie. Next on the list, Daredevil. Daredevil was in the movie. <laughs> 
pretty much all I could say. I mean, hell yeah, what else do you want me to say? He was great, because it was Daredevil. Ned and MJ. When it comes to Ned and MJ, that whole trio, I didn't really care about them. <laughs> this is, it sounds like I'm being negative. I, well, it, it, I am kind of being negative, but I just never really cared about them because I was like, oh, cool, classic trio, whatever. Just with the guy friend, then you have the girl who's a part of the team, who's a friend, who's ends up dating the main character. We've all seen that before. So I was like, all right, whatever. It is what it is. But in this movie, I really felt the relationship a lot more with Peter, I mean, especially MJ and um, and Spider-Man. Well, I don't know why I'm blanking out, but MJ and Spider-Man. I most definitely felt their relationship a lot more. And when the movie plays out the way it plays out, um, because in the end, Spider-Man has to ask Doctor Strange to do a new spell to make sure that nobody knows that Peter Parker exists. You know about Spider-Man, but not Peter Parker. So that means everyone's gonna forget him. And by this point, Aunt May's dead. So it's really just Ned and MJ and Owen and Happy who know who Peter is and whatnot. So when he does a spell and they forget who he is, and before they do, Peter promises to them, and they make him promise that when he sees them again, that he'll explain the whole situation to them and, you know, everything will be, be good, you know? And the way the movie ended was just absolutely perfect. Um, where, I'm sorry, I'm, I don't mean to keep saying um, but basically, at the end of the movie, Peter goes to MJ's job and they, they have like, it's an adorable interaction because you can still feel the energy between all three of them and you can see the longing and the desire in Peter's eyes to just be with his friends and for them to remember and in the end he decides not to tell them who he is especially after you know MJ blushes her hair, brushes her hair back and he still sees the bandage because she got cut during the final battle and he just was like a little better off without me. He didn't say that, but you can just see it in his eyes and he's about to cry and I'm about to cry. It was just such an amazing moment for the character because other than Ame's death, I feel like this was a moment where I was just like, yeah, this, yeah, this kid's really been through a lot. Like this whole trilogy, wow, it was the perfect setup. We just build this character up to just tear everything away from him and leave him with absolutely nothing. I felt that. The only thing I have with Ned, how he suddenly knows magic, because Doctor Strange is great, but Ned is better, apparently. And he just gets Doctor Strange's like portal ring thing, and he's just making portals. And I see why the movie had to do it so they could bring in the other Spider-Man. But I mean, I was just like, oh. Cool. 